collapse of World Trade Center 7? Was the structural seal saved and thoroughly examined and analyzed? Did this really get any? Well, they tell us they didn't, as you heard Kevin uh, discuss, although <clears throat> I, I know at least one NIST representative was on site in the yards picking through the steel, and that was John Gross. And he was involved in these reports, yet none of the steel was saved. The steel is marked when you build a building, just like any assembly. Most, of you, most people have had uh, experience putting together some form of assembly. The parts are marked, so you know which, how to put which one where. That's the same thing in a building. And usually it's embossed so that it doesn't get roughed off or scraped off, as you can see in this picture. I don't know if you can you see where it's it's embossed? The uh, part numbers are embossed. Here's uh, a <coughs> fire engineering professor, Jonathan Barnett. He discusses uh, the fact that they didn't have any opportunity to look at the steel from building seven. We were surprised that Tower Seven collapsed. Uh, we being the team that investigated what occurred on that day. There was some damage to Tower 7 caused by the debris that hit it from Tower 1, but uh, the damage was certainly not similar in scope or magnitude to that caused by the aircraft hitting Towers 1 and 2. Uh, when you have a structural failure, uh, you carefully go through the debris field, uh, looking at each item, photographing every beam as it collapsed and every uh, a column where it is in the ground, and you pick them up very carefully and you uh, look at each element. We were unable to do that in the case of Tower 7. So why? <laughs> why weren't they able to do that? Um, I didn't take this out of context. There were no additional comments by Dr. Barnett as to why they were unable to examine the steel from this clip. This was a History Channel clip. The narrator did step in and enter his comments and say that the steel was removed for search and rescue. But as you can see, there was a clear line of demarcation between Building 7 and the tower, the Twin Tower Complex. Easy Street shows you that. Um, even if they did <clears throat> have to take it away, why didn't they save it? And apparently nobody was killed. We did hear reports about one Secret Service agent. Apparently he was found. So there was no bodies to be looked for in World Trade Center 7. But the steel was eliminated. <clears throat> so, like I said, none of it was saved except for this one piece. From what we are told, um, that was looked at in the FEMA uh, Building Performance Assessment Team report. And in that one, they found the intergranular melting and recommended that this should uh, pick up on that, which they never did. And of course, here's this statement that no metallography could be carried out because no steel was recovered from World Trade Center 7. And they just compared the properties to other World Trade Center steels. Well, that's not the point. You're not looking at it to determine the properties. We already know that. That was in the specifications. You're looking at it to see if there was tampering. That's what fire investigations are all about. You don't need to look at the steel to test it and see, oh, did it have the properties we needed? That's done when, during construction or beforehand. Nobody does a failure analysis by not saving physical evidence. Nobody. If you were in a private industry and you did that, you'd be out of business. You'd be taken to court if you tried to do a failure analysis without saving physical evidence. A lot of people are upset by this, and uh, fire engineering, the, the editor for Fire Engineering Magazine, Bill Manning, wrote scathing articles about it. And I think there were some 9-11 victims' family members. I think Sally Reinhardt protested. There was her and other people that protested. Um, they went to Rudy Giuliani, Giuliani's office, or the Office of Design and Construction, and protested this. And they just said, we thought it was prudent to get rid of the steel. I mean, this is, this is it's ridiculous. And I think it's worthy of an investigation in and of itself. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let's take a look and see how this says the collapse of the steel superstructure occurred without the benefit of having the steel examined. And I want you to look at this. This shows the 
the skeleton of this building. And look at the enormous grid of steel that's put together. And that sort of tells you why no steel frame, um, that's why I'm using the term superstructure. It's not just a roof with trusses. It's a superstructure, it's a grid of steel. <clears throat> well, they say, and this is, uh, there's a little bit of overlap between what Kevin presented and myself, but it's probably good for you to see a couple times. So they say that these beams expanded and pushed this girder off its seat on this column and this column and caused that floor to fall down, collapsing eight other floors below it, leaving column 79 unsupported, laterally enough to cause it to buckle, and that that precipitated the entire interior to progress progressively first from column 79, um, I can look at this, from column 79 back to 81, and then from, that's north, north to south, and then east to west. They say the entire interior collapsed first and left an exterior shell which then collapsed on its own due to its own, being overloaded by its own weight. That's what they say. <clears throat> of course, they claim there was no shear studs on the girders. Kevin already mentioned that to you. And then the, uh, there's an inset there where I'm, I just put up a typical shear stud installation. And just to explain again uh, how shear studs work, I think uh, everybody understands. We put two planks of wood together and then we pushed on, them, pushed on them in the middle. You can imagine how the one plank on the outside, it's got a different radius of curvature than the one on the inside, and there's, there will sort of be some sliding movement between them. And when, but when you nail the boards together, they'll bend it on the same axis. They'll stay together. That's what shear studs do. They make the concrete slab act with the beam, as though you took another plank and put it on the one plank. It makes it stronger. So when there are no shear studs, it makes it a weaker system. And they're denying that there's any, any studs on the girder. At least now they are. <clears throat> so they also go and say in their report that the uh, lateral stiffness of that girder is much less than the axial stiffness of the beams. The, the four beams or five beams framing into it from the, from the east side. <clears throat> and they say, they actually say two things. Um, this did an analysis, an ANSYS analysis, that's a type of structural software, finite element software, that they did themselves and they determined that the, the uh, girder walked off its seat, meaning it was pushed off. They then said that, um, that they didn't really have, I think Kevin showed you, they didn't really have the, the amount of expansion needed to get it off the seat. They sent their ANSYS model to a company they subcontracted with, who did the LSD DYNA model of the global collapse. And apparently, this is implied they couldn't get it to walk off because their failure mechanism is it got the beams buckled and it pulled them off. So here we have in the same report, they're talking about it's pushed off or it's pulled off. Pushed off or pulled off. They don't make a decision on which one it is. This is amazing. Right. Fraud. What's that? Oh, I just said fraud. <laughs> well, that's one explanation. <clears throat> so here's lonely column 79, who has all its, all its beams stripped away from it. And what you have to understand, uh, columns, the more slender a column is, the more likely it is to buckle. So it doesn't take a lot of restraint. Um, all you have to do, and I think I mentioned this later, but I'll tell you now, is you have to provide a slight amount of support to the side of a column to counteract any out of plumbness that will create a moment at the top. And a moment is a force over a distance. If the loads are off center a little bit, it'll tend to want to buckle it. So you just push on a little bit, and it's only like six tenths of a percent of the axial load. You've got to push on it from the side. That's it. It's not very much. But anyway, they say that the column 79 was after these floors, collapsed down eight stories. The column 79 was uh, unsupported for eight floors. <clears throat>